welcome children today we are going to learn how Newton used Kepler's laws for deriving the Newton's universal law of gravitation to start this first we need to know what we have studied earlier about centripetal force you know that when an object is moving in a circle in a constant speed it is performing uniform circular motion and during this motion there is a force which is acting towards the center of the circle so when an object performs uniform circular motion there is a force which is acting towards the center of the circle this force is called the centripetal force now a formula has been derived to know the amount of force which acts that formula is F is equal to mv square upon R where F is the force m is the mass v is the velocity and R is the radius of the circle so what did we say we told that we earlierly earlier we have studied that is uniform circular motion is possible only when the object is constantly acted upon by force directed towards the center of the circle that force which acts towards the center of the circle is called centripetal force and if m is the mass of the object v is its speed and r is the radius of the circle then we know that f is equal to mv square upon r now when we talk about circles here we are talking about our solar system we have the sun at the center and we have the planets which are revolving around the sun so in such a scenario the centripetal force acting towards the sun must be f is equal to mv square upon r what did i say i told just now that when the planets are revolving around the sun the centripetal force acting towards the sun is f is equal to mv square upon r where m is the mass of the planet v is the speed of the planet and r is its distance from the sun now here an interesting point which we already have studied in our earlier standards is how do we express speed speed is given by this standard formula speed is equal to distance traveled upon time taken remember you have to focus on where the cursor moves okay so speed is equal to distance traveled upon time taken we all know this now how do we denote speed by which letter we denote speed by this letter v and so our formula now can be written as v is equal to distance traveled upon time taken now distance what will be the distance traveled because you see in a circle the distance traveled will be the circumference of the circle now from mathematics you know the formula of the circumference of the circle what is that that is 2 pi r so our formula will now look like v is equal to 2 pi r upon t did you get it so how did we start we started from here speed is equal to distance traveled upon time taken and we wrote in place of speed v because that is a letter which we denote distance traveled we have written as 2 pi r because 2 pi r is a circumference of the circle t is the time taken so we take this v and we substitute it in our formula of centripetal force that is f is equal to mv square upon r when we substitute the v it is in this place right so what do we get we will get f is equal to m 2 pi r upon t the whole square why the whole square because if you look at v here 
there is square so you will have a square and then you will have upon r did you get this once again what did we do we substituted for v when we substituted for v what is v 2 pi r upon t so we will get m is equal to 2 pi r upon t whole square upon r that is the denominator now when you square this square of 2 is 4 so we got a 4 square of pi is pi square and square of r is r square but you see here only r is mentioned right because in the denominator also there was one r so both one of the r will get cancelled and remains what is one r so finally your equation will be 4m pi square r upon t square how did this t square come because this t is in the denominator square of this t will be t square so we have now our formula f is equal to 4m pi square r upon t square once again squaring 2 which is 4 pi is pi square r is r square but already there is one r in the denominator so we will be left with single r and then there is t square of which is t square now here things are getting interesting why because we know that according to kepler's law t square upon r cube is equal to k so what we have to do is we have to try to get in this equation t square upon r cube or terms which are r cube and t square as you can see t square is already there but there is no r cube so what we do is we already have r and we want r cube so what we do if you have r and you want r cube what you will do you will multiply and divide by r square why multiply and divide because in maths that is what we do if you are multiplying you have to simultaneously divide it so that the value remains the same so you get 4 m pi square r square will be multiplied here as well as in the denominator so when you multiply that you will get r cube in the numerator and r square in the denominator so you have that in the next equation f is equal to m pi f is equal to 4 m pi square r square here and in the numerator r cube now we have taken this t square separate out why because if you look into kepler's third law it has one representation of t square upon r square look at the image you will see that these images now are almost the same but they are inverted that is this fraction is t square upon r cube but what we have in our equation is r cube upon t square now you know that t square upon r cube is k so what will be r cube upon t square it will be 1 upon k once again t square upon r cube is k so what is r cube upon t square that will be 1 upon k so if you multiply in this bracket 1 upon k then that k will go into the denominator and you will end up with f is equal to 4 m pi square up upon r square k f is equal to 4 m pi square upon r square k f is equal to 4 m pi square upon r square k right how did you get this k once again we will start from here again our formula which we derived f is equal to 4 m pi square r upon t square we multiplied this and divided this equation by r square and we got r cube in the numerator and r square in the denominator according to our kepler's third law as you can see t square upon r cube is k so r cube upon t square will be 1 upon k so the k ends up in the denominator now what do we do now if you look carefully at these terms 4 mass pi and k are constants 4 m pi and k are constants so when they are constants we write but all these are constants and so what happens to our equation our equ equation now is four force 
is equal to constant into 1 upon r square. How did you get that? Carefully look here. 4 m pi square upon k is constant. So you will have constant into 1 upon r square because r square is in the denominator. So it is 1 upon r square. So when I remove this constant and equal to I can put the proportionality sign and so I get therefore f is proportional to 1 upon r square. This is the part of Newton's law which says that the force acting between the bodies is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So you see children, Newton got his law of gravitation from Kepler's third law. And Newton concluded that the centripetal force, which is the force acting on the planet and is responsible for its circular motion, must be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the planet and the sun. Look at this formula. He concluded that the force acting between the planet and the sun must be inversely proportional to the distance between the planet and the sun. And hence, Newton identified this force as the force of gravity and he gave us the inverse law of gravitation. So, one thing we should know that this gravitational force is very weak than the other forces in nature. So, I hope you understood this derivation. This is a very important topic from the point of view of exam. Can be asked for two marks. As a question, show that how Newton postulated the inverse square law of gravitation using Kepler's law. What is the question? Show that how Newton postulated the inverse law of gravitation using Kepler's law. You have to practice this after understanding this video. Thank you.